Paul. And so we gave him praise. Hallelujah. Our God is faithful. All my life long, he has been faithful. And we bless his name this morning. Thank you, WM. Thank you, Missionettes. Greetings to Pastor Nelson again and the members of the board. Greetings to Auntie Maxine, Auntie Paulette, and Auntie Grant Earl. <laughs> Auntie Pat. God bless you, ladies. God bless all of you, brethren. This is a house of our God. And it's so good to be in God's house. To worship him. And as we come this morning, we come for no reason but to honor his name. He's a great God. He has been great in our lives. Hadn't it been for him, where would we be? And we just give him honor and glory today. What a wonderful Lord. What a wonderful Savior. What a wonderful God. Turn with me, please, to 2 Kings chapter 4. I'll be reading from verse 1 through to verse 7 from the English Standard Version, ESV. Please stand. You'll have a little while to sit. As long as you are able to. If you have a disability and you're not able to stand, I excuse you. Or if you have a baby in your lap and you're not able to stand, then you may remain seated. Praise God. Now the wife of one of the sons of the prophets cried to Elisha, Your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that your servant feared the Lord. But the creditor has come to take away my two children to be his slaves. And Elisha said to her, What shall I do for you? Tell me. What have you in the house? And she said, Your servant has nothing in the house except a jar of oil. Then he said, Go outside. Borrow vessels from all your neighbors. Empty vessels and not too few. Then go in and shut the door behind yourself and your sons and pour into all these vessels. And when one, in, and when one is full, set it aside. So she went from him and shut the door behind herself and her sons. And as she poured, they brought the vessels to her. When the vessels were full, she said to her son, bring me another vessel. And he said to her, there is not another. Then the oil stopped flowing. She came and told the man of God. And he said, go sell the oil and pay your debts. And you and your sons and live on the rest. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word. We thank you, God, for the truths of your word. We thank you, God, that your word still ministers to us today. And I pray, God, another time as I stand here in your presence that you'll anoint your word afresh and anoint me afresh also, Father. I pray, God, that as your word is spoken, O God, it shall not return unto you void but it shall accomplish what you want it to. And so we give you thanks, Lord, and pray that you'll give to us ears that are open to your spirit, ears that are open to you, wills, Lord, that are quick to obey. And I say thank you, Lord. We say thank you, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. I will use for a theme today, God's provision never ceases. God's provisions never cease. Okay, so God's provision never ceases. And so we have here in this chapter four miracles. There's a record of four miracles. But we're going to focus our attention today on just one, the first one. And as we look at it, let's bear in mind that God's provision never ceases. We have here in the story the prophet Elisha. This is a younger prophet. We have the widow and her two sons. Now you may remember that Elisha, 
ministered to Elijah. Elijah was called the prophet of fire. But we don't see Elisha exhibiting any such thing. He was gentler than the prophet Elijah. Elijah would tell God to rain down fire on people and it would happen. Now, Elisha was called while he was working behind the plows and his ministry lasted for more than 50 years. So, brethren, God doesn't use lazy people. God likes to know that he can use people who know how to work. That is what it is all about. So if you are lazy, forget it. God wants people who know how to put their shoulders to the wheel. People who know what it is to work. It was Elisha who asked Elijah for a double portion of his spirit when Elijah said to him that God would take him away from the earth. Now we could ask ourselves, why is it that Elisha would have wanted a double portion of the spirit that was upon Elijah so that he could continue the prophetic ministry? And when we read the Bible, we see that Elisha perform twice as many miracles as Elijah. As powerful as Elijah was, God caused Elisha to perform twice as many miracles. And all those miracles were to the glory of God. Now Elijah was Elisha's mentor. Elisha walked with Elijah. And so they had this father-son relationship. And you know, a mentor is one who has someone under their wings, teaching and training that individual. And brethren, whoever we walk with will rub off on us. So it means that we need to walk with the right people. As Christians, we can't be walking with the crowd. As Christians, we cannot fit in with the crowd. Whoever we walk with must be able to lift us up, not bear us down. And we must be able to impact those individuals. We have in the Bible, Joshua and Moses. Moses' spirit was on Joshua. We have Paul and Timothy. And Paul referred to Timothy as his son. And we also have Elisha and Elijah. Now in this story, brethren, we have a widow. That means she had lost her husband. As a widow, she was left destitute. She got to the stage where she was desperate. She had nothing. She was dejected. And the creditors came to take her sons to put them into slavery because her husband died in debt. And this woman couldn't clear the debt. So brethren, that is saying something to us as families. Father, whoever is the head of the family must make provision. That after they go, their families must be taken care of. So here is this widow. She is dejected. She is desperate. She did not know what to do. As far as she was concerned, her house was empty. But when we read in the Bible, from Deuteronomy chapter 15... From verse 7, it says, If among you one of your brothers should become poor in any of your towns within your land that the Lord your God is giving you, you shall not harden your heart or shut your hand against your poor brother 
but you shall open your hand to him and lend him sufficient for his need, whatever it may be. Take care, lest there be an unworthy thought in your heart and you say, the seventh year, the year of release is near and your eye look grudgingly on the poor brother and you give him nothing. And he cried to the Lord against you and you'll be guilty of sin. You shall give to him freely and your heart shall not be grudging when you give to him. Because for this the Lord your God will bless you in all your work and in all that you undertake. For there shall never cease to be poor in the land. Therefore I command you, you shall open wide your hand to your brother to the needy, and to the poor in your land. So this creditor, this man who wanted to take this woman's sons into slavery was going against the law of the Lord. And as it was then, it is the same today. Give to the poor. Give to the needy. Give to the suffering. Give to those who have a need, not grudgingly, but willingly, cheerfully, so that they can live. We are told, brethren, that we will always have the poor with us. Now, this woman was operating on zero. So it means that her back was against the wall. She was at a crossroads. And how many times have we found ourselves at a crossroads? Anybody here? You find that you're at a crossroads. You have your needs. And you don't know where the next dollar is coming from. But brethren, we have a God. Jehovah Jireh. We have a God. The God who provides. The God who is able to do far more. Exceedingly abundantly. Than we could ever ask or think. So brethren. We need to trust our God. Last week the question was. What do you have in your hand? Today, the prophet asks the woman, what do you have in your house? What do you have in your house, brethren? Sometimes we think we have nothing. But look around you. There are so many things around us in our house. So many things that we can use to help ourselves. So we don't have to be destitute. If you think you consider now, you may think, boy, I have a need. But is there anything in your house that you can use, as we said, to turn your hand and make fashion? Anything? There may be something there. The woman said, all I have is a pot of oil. Brethren, she was sitting on a gold mine, and she didn't know it. The oil spoke of abundance. Olive oil speaks of abundance. And so, brethren, she had that pot of oil in her house. The song says, little is much when God is in it. Labor not for wealth nor fame. Little, however little it is. You may remember when Elijah was upon Mount Carmel. And the rain was about to start. What did he see? A little cloud. Like the size of a man's hand. And the torrents of rain came from it. Moses had a staff in his hand. But it became useful under God's mighty power. David had five smooth stones and a sling. And they were deadly. He had no military training. But they became deadly. One stone in the sling. And Goliath fell. 
the widow of Zarephath had a little meal in a jar and a little oil, but it lasted throughout the famine. And she fed not only herself, but the prophet. Now, this woman had a pot. It says a pot, you know. A pot of oil. We don't know the size of the pot. Some, some versions say a jar. This says a jar. We don't know the size of the jar. Maybe she had that oil there put up for a rainy day. So her rainy day brethren had come. The rainy day had come. So brethren, I don't know about you, you know, sometimes the Lord hides even money from us. We go into a bag and we find a thousand dollars. I remember once I went into a bag, you know, and I found a thousand dollars. And I searched every bag. Every bag to see what was in the others. But God had hidden that. So brethren, maybe she had that deer for a rainy day. And it was now time. The time had come. So brethren, God uses various means to provide for us. We just don't know how God is going to provide. So we need to remember that his provision never ceases. The way he works today is not the way he's going to work tomorrow. So we should never ever shut him in a box. Don't put your God in a box and shut him up. Now, brethren, as a child of God, we have within us the Holy Spirit. The same Spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead dwells within us. Brethren, when we are activated, we can be worse than dynamite. God can work and God will work if we let him. Now, brethren, oil is an emblem of the Holy Spirit. He is the one who lives within us. He is the one who is our guide. He is the one who is our comforter. He is the one who is our blessed paraclete, the one who walks beside us. He is the one who empowers us. He's the one who drew us to Christ. He's the one who enlivens us. He's the one who refreshes us. He's the one who fills us. He's the one who causes signs and wonders to be performed. But brethren, we have to be open to him. If we don't want him, he's not going to push himself on us. So brethren, here was this woman with this oil. And she got some instructions from the prophet. She could choose to obey or disobey. The prophet said to her, Go among your neighbors and borrow empty vessels. And when you get them, go into your house and shut the door. After you shut the door, pour out into the vessels. And brethren, she followed the instructions. As long, brethren, as she poured out, the oil flowed. But first of all, she had to shut the door. And the song says, Lord, I have shut the door. Speak now your word, which in the din and throng could not be heard. So brethren, there's something about shutting the door away from distractions, away from the public view, away from those around us, away from the eyes, brethren. She obeyed and she shut the door. Are you shutting your door? Are you shutting your door so that God can make his provisions known to you? We shut the door, brethren, in prayer. We shut the door in communion with God. We shut the door, brethren, so God can speak to us. We shut the door so God can do 
his work. Now we need to note, brethren, that this woman heeded the voice of the prophet. She heeded the voice of the prophet. And in the same way that she heeded the voice of the prophet, we need to heed the voice of true servants of God. We need to heed the voice of the Holy Spirit, brethren, because God will make a way for us and God will satisfy our needs. If she did not follow the instructions, nothing would happen. Absolutely nothing would happen. Nothing, 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 nothing would happen. But guess what? It also took time for her to pour from the jar into the different vessels. Sometimes we want everything to happen overnight. It takes time to be holy. It is not going to happen right away. We have a need and we say, God is taking too long. And we say, no, this thing is not working for me. This Christian thing is not working. I can't trust him anymore. So we step out and we step into problems. Brethren, take time to seek after your God. And you know, when it comes to oil, your hands can get greasy. So you have to be very careful how you're going to hold that vessel to pour out from it. If you are not careful, it can slip out of your hands. This woman poured out. And as she continued to pour, the vessels were filled. She got to the point where she said to her son, and notice it says here, son. Seems like both sons got the vessels. But then it got to the point where it says, son. One son apparently was with her in this not everybody is going to be with you in what God is doing. And we need to bear that in mind at all times. When God tells you to do something, it's not for you to go out there and blab it to everybody. Not everybody is going to be with you. So you do what God the Holy Spirit tells you to do. Sometimes it may look foolish, but the foolishness of God is wiser than men and we need to understand brethren god's provision never ceases i want to bring to you this morning that god's provision was not only physical it was not only financial so the woman could meet her needs there is also a spiritual aspect to it and god the holy spirit can pour into us today are we empty so God can pour into us? What do you need from God today? Is your need only physical? For your physical everyday needs to be met. Or do you have a spiritual need where you are saying to God, God, I need something from you. Lord, I am desperate. Lord, I am destitute. Lord, I am not satisfied. Fill me up, Lord. Notice, I believe it's not stated here, but these vessels would have had to be clean vessels from the oil to be poured into them. God uses no dirty vessels. So brethren, if God is to pour into us, we must be clean. So we have to ask him every day to cleanse us. And this is one of the tasks of the Holy Spirit. We sang it this morning, to burn out carnal nature, to burn out sin, to burn out unrighteousness, to burn out unholiness, so that God the Holy Spirit can pour into us. And brethren, as he pours into us, we must be willing to pour into others. 
I believe Elijah was pouring into Elisha. And Elisha saw something that was happening with Elijah. So when Elijah was about to, take it away, to be taken away from him, he said, I want a double portion of that spirit that is upon you. Are you walking with people who are spirit led? Are you walking with people who are filled with the spirit of God? Are you walking with people with whom you can talk about the Lord? Are you walking with people and talking with people who will say, let us shut the door on this situation? Or do you become negative and make the situation worse? I submit to you today, brethren, that God is able to provide for all of your needs. His provisions never cease, whether it be physical or spiritual. Ask God, the Holy Spirit, even now, to meet your need. Ask God, the Holy Spirit, even now, to pour into you. Because, brethren, we, um, the scripture that was read this morning in Joel said, In the last days, in the last days, it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Not only into, but upon your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions. Even on the male and female servants in those days, I will pour out my spirit. And I will show wonders in the heaven and on the earth. Blood and fire and columns of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness. The moon to blood before the great an awesome day of the Lord comes, and it shall come to pass that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved.